I guess the biggest thing you were saying, like, there's, like, the advice people give. So you told, you watch my least assignment interview on this channel and medical doctors, they give advice, consultations. But the thing when we started talking was more of like the how people do it. When I see you two together, it's like, it's the back and forth the energy is like inspiring each other. But the biggest word that comes to mind is community. So when I saw your website, what you're doing, and just in general sense, I guess I'd like to kind of pick your brain about how community plays a role in helping people go vegan, plant-based, et cetera. That's actually pivotal for us in, in terms of um, allowing us to, to move forward to where we are now, because we felt that we'd, that we'd found a community, a respected community that was um, endorsing really what we were wanting to do ourselves personally. So we want to be there for people generally, for people from any walk of life, people who are maybe struggling with the decision to go plant-based because they feel, I don't really know how to do it. Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Creating a Vegan World Documentary. In this episode, we're interviewing Graham and Annette Henry, where they're talking about the concept of vegan community. And I could tell from my personal experience, I would not have gone vegan if it was not for the community around me. So in this interview, we're talking about the aspect of community, conversation, as well as their own personal stories and experiences leading them up to building this vegan community that'll help spread the vegan message throughout the world and be the glue that sticks it together. So I really hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. Do you want to start off? Do you want to tell us who you are, what your background is, especially with plant-based eating? Absolutely, yeah. So we're Henry and Henry, um, Graham Henry and my wife and partner, Annette Henry. Um, and we started our plant-based journey around about, I would say 2015, 2016. Depends so, on how you map it, but yes, that would just about fit. We, we both, um, it was very much um, a result of overturning chronic health conditions um, that kind of took us towards the, uh, the direction of, of becoming more plant-based, ultimately completely plant-based. Um, for me, it was having, um, being um, significantly overweight and obese for uh, all of my adult life. Um, probably from the age of about 11. Um, it reached a point in uh, about 1995, in my mid-30s, where um, I had to go on to high blood pressure medication and I was also taking statins for cholesterol. Um, and basically, it took a long time for me to get the realisation that there might be a way out that didn't involve drugs. So before I go on to that in more detail, I'll let Annette also kind of tell you a little bit about hers so that we can kind of share our experiences. Definitely. Uh, That's great. It, it started earlier for me. It was about 20 years ago. I had endometriosis and uh, I had surgery for it and it came back and I thought I don't want to go through the surgery again and have the nasty uh, hormone replace, replacement type things that they give you. So I by chance found a book about healing endometriosis through nutrition and that's what set me off. And I, I eliminated dairy at that stage, which was the, the first step towards being plant-based. And, and it made such a huge difference. I never went back to the doctors again. So not, not for that anyway. So I, I was amazed by it. And, and I still am. I'm actually still amazed because people are still talking about endometriosis as if there's nothing you can do. And clearly there is. So that was very exciting. It got me more more and more interested in nutrition. And I kept, I kept researching, gradually cleaning up my diet and having... Uh, fewer fewer animal products as, as I went and um, then when we got together uh, to my surprise and and uh, it was quite pleasing I suppose Graham decided to take on my diet more or less which seems seemed very pleasant of him but a, a little bit strange to have what was essentially a diet for a gynecological condition I thought because I was still in the medical mindset of you do that for that condition and that for that condition just as you do with medicine and of course it, it isn't like that at all but he took on what I was eating and uh, what happened next? Yeah, well, just a little bit of context as well. Um, so when we were both um, experiencing these health conditions, we were actually living apart. We were 
both, um, well, at the time I started with the complications, the high blood pressure, I was living in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We're both from the UK. At that time, Annette had returned back to the UK after being um, uh, a teacher um, in Germany and uh, teaching German, English and Spanish, I believe. So we we kind of coexisted in different uh, in different countries, but we originally met when we were students back in 1983 in Germany. So we'd gone this whole period of time, like living our own lives, and then um, we kind of ultimately connected at the point where Annette said that I started to eat similar to her uh, because we got together through Friends Reunited. Um, and uh, we, we quickly realized that actually there was more to it than just friendship. And uh, eventually we got engaged, got married. So right at the start of that kind of reconnection, it was, as Annette said, we were eating, um, it, Annette was eating this way. And for me, I've always been pretty open to kind of, I guess I eat anything. <laughs> Ultimately, that was probably one of my initial problems, but I've always been open to trying new things. And I found that eating this way, I was, I started to lose weight just without really trying, without counting calories, without thinking about what I was, um, what I was eating, just realizing that it tasted pretty good. And uh, because I was losing weight, I thought maybe this is the solution. So I kept on eating that way. And also Annette is extremely active in terms of she walks a lot, uh, much more than I ever used to do. So we were walking a lot as well. So we were incorporating a lot of regular exercise movement alongside this more healthy way of eating. And the weight started to, con uh, the weight continued to drop off. So I think we kind of, you know, we, we, we kind of had that situation for a couple of years. Um, and at that point I hadn't kind of resolved the health conditions. I hadn't, I hadn't really like analyzed it. I just realized that I felt better. I was losing weight. And then we both discovered raw food, um, uh, raw, vegan, raw, raw plant-based food. We went on a, a retreat, um, that we found out about at some events we'd been to. We met the, 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 the lady that was, that was running the retreat and it was a, it was in, in Wales in a beautiful country house. And we thought, that sounds kind of fun. Let's go for it. Let's try it out. So um, maybe you want to say a little bit about that, Annette? Yeah, that was, uh, that, that was quite exciting. Everything completely, completely raw, completely vegan. And uh, things like no caffeine, no alcohol. And uh, one of us, I shan't say who, had some detox symptoms fairly soon on. <laughs> and uh, they were quite profound. <laughs> Um, so that, that made an impression on us. We drove away saying, no, we're not, we don't want to do that. And by the time we got back home, we decided we actually did want to give it a go. So we bought the equipment and, and, and started dehydrating, making crackers and all the rest of it and the big blender doing all sorts of different things in that. So essentially we started off uh, gourmet raw and we've, we've since de evolved and brought it into line with what is actually good for human physiology, which is just a whole food plant-based diet. It's high raw, it's based on fruits and vegetables, but it's not completely raw. And, and we're very comfortable with that. It seems to be working very well for us. Um, and we've just put it to the test in a big way. We've, we've made a big move to Germany and uh, there are all sorts of stressful situations that go along with that. And, and we're coping quite well at the age of 58. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of our story, I think as well, that we are now living in Berlin. Uh, we moved from the UK um, in the latter part of uh, 2020. Um, realizing owing to Brexit that if we wanted to retain our uh, rights to live in an EU country, um, the same rights that before Brexit happened, we would have to move before the end of 2020. And because of our background, because we studied languages, because we've lived abroad, that was quite important to us. We felt that we wanted to retain that right. So we thought it's either now or never. So wh when did we choose to move? In the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> of course. Um, so, so we sold we sold our house um, in uh, in the UK and we moved uh, physically moved travelled in September last year with just suitcases uh, and a few belongings left all our stuff in storage in the UK and we've only been reunited with that in the last two weeks we've now we've now actually got it in our new apartment that we've just bought so we've been living really over the last seven months just out of suitcases. I mean, we're kind of 58 years old. Most people at this age, at this stage of life, tend to think that, you know, let's kind of take it more easy. We've kind of done it the opposite way around. We've completely revolutionized our lifestyles. Berlin was really important to us because it's a very, there's a very strong plant-based movement in Berlin. And it's, 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 a, it's an amazing city in so many ways. It kind of meets, it fits with what we were looking for. 
um, and therefore it's been it's given us extra energy to really embark on this on this journey about creating this plant-based community because we feel we can kind of tap into the the energy or the vibration in Berlin and it gives us a little bit more than we were living in the north of England previously which which is fine we were living in the lovely city of York um, but there just wasn't that kind of energy or movement that we wanted that we were looking for so it kind of it kind of feels right now um so it's been really important for us to to learn about how powerful uh, plant-based food can be when i at, at the at the height of my um weight issue i was at the height of my weight issue that sounds a slightly odd phrase but i was around um what was it uh, 18 stone which is about um uh, it's it's about oh gosh 200 and, i think 240 pounds about 100 kilos mm-hmm. um which is pretty big um i'm now uh, around 11 and a half stone um mm-hmm. that's about 73 kilos so i lost um i lost a pretty pretty big amount of weight and um and i came off my blood pressure medication my doctor my gp in the uk uh, was happy for me to do that um because he said that it was clear that things had normalized came off the statins so I'm on no medication now um, we continue to to do loads of exercise and next uh, I had no kind of recurrence of a endometriosis symptoms one little interesting kind of episode though um, that another learning um, kind of thing for us really was that do you want to talk about your chronic fatigue? Yeah, in um, uh, 2017, I got the, what they were calling the Aussie flu at the time. You, cannot, you always have to blame some country for it, I suppose. And this time it was Australia. <laughs> and, uh, and it left me fatigued for, for the, following, the whole of 2018 and into 2019. And thankfully, I was listening to some of the right people, that plant-based doctors in particular. I started to listen to them more often. And what they were talking about made me think, hold on, I think I'm getting something wrong here. And especially because instinctively when I had this flu, all I wanted was fruit and and light green vegetables, lettuce and so on. That's all I really wanted for about five days. And and that that made me stop and think as well, but why is it that that that's what I want? And so I, we, well, we very, well, I particularly very quickly just moved away from the gourmet, very high fat, um, raw vegan approach that we we had at the time and, and switched to, uh, much much more um well lower it was much lower fat compared with that and, and it seemed to be everything i needed to recover the, the high fruit high high vegetable high, high amount of vegetables um and and re- drastically reduce the fat so i wasn't having any more oils i was having only nuts and seeds and not quite so many of them and and we we, we eat more or less like that now we, we have beans and we have grains and so on too uh, and that that really that's, that picked me up and enabled me to, as I say, move, make this big move, for example. It would have been absolutely out of the question um, in 2018. Even 2019, I, I couldn't have faced it. So it, it's, it's been a big deal. And it, it was interesting as well to have to go from thinking I've got the best diet in the world, and, you know, ha, as you do uh, very often, to now I really need to stop and, and notice what I'm doing here. And so by now, I would say we are both fully plant-based and, as it turns out, fully vegan as well. I mean, we, we try as hard as we can now to do have nothing to do with anything that's animal-based, uh, whether it's whether it's what we eat or what, what we buy to, to put on our bodies or, or sit on or whatever it is, the cleaning fluids, anything. So it's been a it's been a big process and well worth doing. I think it's also interesting to say or relevant to say that we're, we're not now 100% raw. We actually, no. we, we've arrived at a point that we feel really comfortable with. So I think probably, we're probably about 70%, 75% like raw. Uh, we do enjoy steaming vegetables. We tend to, um, we, we actually, we've just, uh, we've just invested in the new kitchen because the kitchen in the place we bought was uh, somewhat um, old uh, and we decided we wanted to put our own stamp on it. And we've actually not got an oven. Uh, we've got a hob um, just so that we can actually put pans on it and steam, but we, we never use an oven because we never bake or roast. Um, and that's because we want to really just focus on getting the maximum amount of nutrients and the minimum amount of uh, cooked food toxins in what we eat. I mean, we're not saying that we would never eat baked food or oh, roast yeah, food. We're not, we're not kind of absolutist and 
you know, um, to that degree, but it's just our preference. And we love, we love incorporating steamed food together with raw food on the same plate. Uh, so salads alongside some steamed veggies, for example. And that really, that really fits with us. Um, and I think that um, that's really important for us to recognize in ourselves that we've undergone that period of evolution mm -hmm. and change um, because a lot of people get stuck on a certain way of doing things and, and feel that they're, they're almost undermining their principles if they change. But for us, it's been quite important to kind of almost like learn and feel our way and arrive at something that ultimately really, really we love. And I think, I think we've probably reached that point now. What was really, really interesting for us and important for us as well is um, we're not qualified, we're not medical professionals, we're not, we're not nutritionists, uh, but we have trained or been coached under two US-based uh, raw plant-based educators, Dr. Rick uh, Dina and Dr. Karen Dina, who are based in California and pretty well known in, in the plant-based uh, world, particularly in the US, and, and it was important for us to learn from them all of the kind of the rudiments and um, uh, basics of plant-based nutrition, so that we could then become educators ourselves. So that's kind of what we've what we uh, are calling ourselves. We're plant-based uh, educators, uh, plant-based nutrition educators. Um, so we can't do consultations about people's health conditions, and you know we're not qualified to do that. It's more really to talk about what the benefits are of plant-based nutrition to people who are looking to move towards that way of eating or are already on that on that particular already eating that way and want to get more about uh, out of it want to understand how to do it um, and that's really why we've created this um, this this business to become um, to, to to build a community and start a conversation to make people feel they can come and learn more, uh, contribute more, share ideas, because we feel it's absolutely vital that we move towards a plant-based world, that we think it's absolutely essential, and we want to be part of that, so. Absolutely. It's amazing there's so much stuff you resonated with. I just wanted to jump and ask questions, but I didn't want to stop you because there's so much. <laughs> and I think at the beginning, what you're saying, the biggest thing is where it's like going the whole food plant based way, it's like your body reset went back to like the natural state, it seems like, where you have these extra stuff, but when you reset it, that's when things slowly come in, like when you lose the weight or the condition goes in. And I found it interesting that a lot of people who say they go plant based is they kind of enter the journey for health reasons. But a lot of my friends who are vegan and identify as being vegan, in most cases, it's because of animal rights reasons. So it's interesting to see people enter the same type of eating for different reasons there. And my personal, I guess, stage of the journey is I've been vegan for since 2017, but I'm not sure if you listen to my other YouTube videos, but I got diagnosed with high cholesterol and dangerously high levels of triglycerides. So that was the moment I grew an interest away from junk food vegan to more whole food plant-based. And it was really like, right now I'm still trying to cut out the oils. I use olive oil while cooking. So that's, Pretty much where i'm at right now but i guess the biggest thing you're saying like there's like the advice people give so you told you watch my least assignment interview on this channel and medical doctors yeah. they give advice consultations but the thing when we started talking was more of like the how people do it when i see you two together it's like it's the back and forth the energy is like inspiring each other but the biggest word that comes to mind is community so when i saw your website what you're doing and just in general sense I guess I'd like to kind of pick your brain about how community plays a role in helping people go vegan, plant-based, etc. Yeah, it's, it, it's huge, really, because uh, certainly when you start this journey, if you do it on your own, it can be a really lonely process. And I, I, I mentioned that I that about twenty years ago I had to get well. I, I chose the, to, to give up dairy, and. Um, I think I was living in a very small northern northern town. I, I was the only person I knew who wasn't eating dairy, and it was a really unusual thing. People, people were fascinated. Actually, they were really nice to me, but clearly I was a curiosity because I wasn't having dairy. You know, forget going full blown vegan. You know, I just wasn't having dairy. That was enough to to make me unusual. And and it would have been really quite reassuring for me if there had been other people who knew what it was like, who'd already done it, and uh, had 
had advice to give me because I was really worried. All the doctors and every all the specialists seemed to be saying, you know, my bones would break because I wasn't having milk and all the rest of it. I, I worried about that. And I persisted, but uh, I didn't really understand the whole calcium thing and why it is that uh, calcium is associated with milk and all of that, which I, I very much understand now and, and realized completely that dairy milk is far from being the only source of calcium. So that, that was just a minor thing for me, but you know, there are so many different things that people go through, you know, especially when they are transitioning and realize that it, it's quite hard to do it by yourself, especially if, I mean, I was, I, I was a curiosity, as I said, so it was quite pleasant, but, but you don't always get that experience. For some people, it's, it's much less pleasant than that, and, and family may not support you, and you're the odd one out, and you know, it helps, I think, if there's somebody there, a group there, who makes it, makes it feel normal. It, it, we've got to normalize this. This, is, this has got to become normal, and we want to try and do whatever we can to accelerate that sense of normalization of eating plant-based, being vegan. We, we, we feel passionate about it, really passionate about it. Yeah, I think I think that peer pressure is a big is a big thing. Particularly, I think particularly for men as well. I mean, there's obviously this macho image associated with eating meat. I mean, I'm at an age now where that you know that that that's not important to me. But I can imagine a lot of younger guys particularly feel a lot of pressure um, in particularly in Western cultures as well, um, Western countries to to do that. And I think that it's great to see now that it is changing. We can see that there is a definite movement change there, but I think it is still a minority. There are too, still too few people. We keep hearing about there's so many hundred thousand vegans now in the UK, uh, or I think over a million now in the UK and in Germany, I think it's, it's something like um, uh, just under a million. To me, you know, in a population in, in the UK of 60, 65 million, one and a half million plant, uh, vegans is to me still it's it's not enough and we need to we need to allow people to make that change but we you can't force people it's got to be their decision but if you can create a buzz around it and show that it can be inspiring um then people will want to be driven towards that community more um at least that's what we think and we hope um and also the people who are already doing it that at least there's a place for them to come now where they can feel that they can have a conversation and we want to we want to dispel a lot of the myths around um around uh vegan vegan diets and because there's a lot of myths it's, it's constantly being put down by people particularly people who are maybe representing the meat industry the dairy industry and why it's bad for you to eat vegan because you will fall apart and things like that and we want to dispel those myths but in a way that's not not just um in an argumentative way we want to just say look you know this is a great way to eat we love it come and join us so um you mentioned lisa simon earlier and her interview and what the work that that lisa's doing and uh the plant-based plant-based health professionals in the uk which is um of which she is a member um we're, we're actual actual public members of that group ourselves because they allow people who are non-health professionals and that's really inspired us and I think that's partly um, that's actually pivotal for us in, in terms of um, allowing us to to move forward to where we are now because we felt that we that we found the community a respected community that was um, endorsing really what we were wanting to do ourselves personally so we want to be there for people generally, for people from any walk of life, people who are maybe struggling with the decision to go plant-based because they feel, I don't really know how to do it. I might actually, I might actually become unwell because I'm not getting the, the, the nutrients I need. Uh, maybe, and, and for us, a key group is maybe parents of children who want to go vegan because a lot of children are driving this decision in families. So parents who maybe completely unaware of what a vegan diet represents and maybe want to come and get more more knowledge and uh, information about how they can then uh, support their children in their journey so it there's a whole load of different areas that we want to be involved in um, and we're very much at the start of this journey in terms of creating this community because the move to germany that we mentioned um it happened last year and believe me uh, bureaucracy and Germany uh, are two uh, two really things that one can associate, particularly in a it's in true. a pandemic. Everything's taken so much longer, 
Uh, and because we're UK nationals and Brexit has just happened, it's added an extra layer of complication because uh, um, it's much more difficult to do things than it was. So we feel that we've been a little bit held back in that, but we're just desperate to get started. So we'd love to kind of push forwards now and really grow this community and uh, welcome anyone that's interested to come along. Sorry, that was a very long answer. But, um, that's amazing. And just reflecting back my personal experience, because the community thing really stood out with me because uh, 2017, I started hanging out with a group of animal rights activists. They had uh, weekly potluck dinners every Saturday night. So one woman, she owned a house and a group of 20, 30 activists, we brought our own vegan meals. And this is during my transitioning stage. And it's because of that community is the reason I went vegan. So if it wasn't for that, it'd be with my friends who are non-vegan, my family who are not vegan. And it's like pulled me in, but it's like really gripped me together. It's like the glue. Then I mentioned over email, there's Ken and Allison from Wisdom House in Peru. So 2018, I started to help a vegan startup with my online marketing work. Uh, the CEO, he was down in Peru, found Ken and Allison. It's a 16 room house. There's a courtyard in the back. There's a garden, yoga studio, office in the front, room upstairs, there are living quarters. But they're uh, an American expat couple and they're, they're plant-based. When we went there, they were still having dairy, cheese, yogurt, things like that. But when a group of us vegans came down to do the marketing work, um, we started sharing Dr. Greger videos and other types of plant-based things. So we didn't have the information ourselves, but we shared it. And then they slow, we slowly realized they were giving up milk, they were giving up the yogurt, they were giving up the cheese. And now their, their vision is to have the plant-based community that works on climate change. They're partnering with climate healers or associated with them. And they want to have inspire like hundreds of houses across the world to bring people in, train them up, get them together. But kind of looping back, it's the community that brings everything together. So it's amazing to see right. how it goes. That's really interesting to hear. That's, yeah, it's definite parallels there. And um, for us as well, I mentioned the, the plant-based health professionals. And um, another thing that really, really kind of... Um, almost determined the direction we're going in now and kind of made us, enabled us to make a little veer, we veered direction a little bit in terms of how we wanted our business to be. Um, it was joining, um, getting to know and joining a group called Vegan Business Tribe, which is a UK, UK based group. Absolutely fantastic. Um, they run networking events for people who run vegan businesses um, or who, who have businesses where the products are aimed at vegans um, and for us, it's given us so much inspiration and we feel part of a, a community there and we look forward to the networking events. So um, they offer podcasts, they do um, uh, business clinics uh, for smaller numbers of people, they do networking events. And that kind of gave us an idea that that's kind of what we want to do, but not for business people. We want to do something like that for people who are look, just looking to become um, plant based or continue to be plant based and make it work. And, it's kind of it's been really pivotal so that community is it's it's resonating really in, the, in a sense with with other people who have similar values um and i think that's where we want to be so i love it yeah i just joined a, or just started a mastermind with another vegan business where um 2013 i built an internet business which was an app company and myself and two other entrepreneurs moved in the house together in scottsdale arizona and because of that, we're like motivating each other to work harder, this and that. We grew our businesses. I quit the corporate world and did the digital nomad thing for a while. But I just started another one where it was, uh, she's starting a vegan t-shirt company. My friend does graphic design work and just kind of building that out. And it's, it's really been motivating. Like I type in the Slack channel, these are my goals for the week. And I type as I go. And then she's inspired by it. Then Derek's inspired by it. He's a graphic designer. But it's really because of them that's keeping me accountable and just exactly the vegan business tribe. And it's funny. Um, like I, I recognized you when you messaged me. So you messaged me on LinkedIn or whoever's listening to this, we connect on LinkedIn. You saw my Lisa Simon interview. We started talking, but I've seen the vegan business tribe on LinkedIn all the time. And I think you might've been one of the, like little in the zoom link, like the screenshots of like yeah, them yeah, doing those yeah. live, live zoom calls. Like, yeah. Now right, making exactly. connection. <laughs> it, it, it's quite funny as well because, um, one of the things that, um, that, that, uh, that David and Lisa, who run the Vegan Business Tribe, talk about is when you're running a business, it's about it's 
who you are and your story is so important um, and you know what is remarkable about you and um, I mean we we feel that you know we, we're just normal people um, well some people would say we're not um, um, but I think in terms of like because we're man and wife and we're running a business together as well which aligns with both our hearts we feel that that's quite special and we feed off each other in terms of energy if one of us is feeling a little bit down or uh, you know lacking motivation the other one can pick pick uh, pick you up and and that's really important to us as well um, and also I think in the UK uh, the vegan movement is um, uh, often associated with places like, I mean, I don't know how well you know, know the UK, but there's certain pockets where places like Brighton in the UK, which is which has got a big vegan community, and uh, and Bristol as well. Um, but the north of England is almost like a, it's a bit of a desert in that sense, really. Um, and a lot of the kind of, particularly the raw food scene, is associated with often very young, vibrant, um, 20 or 30 years, 30 year olds. We're nearly 60 uh, and we're living in, we were living in the north of England. We were feeling that, look, if we can do it, anybody can do it. And, um, and that's, that's, that's really important. It's quite funny because uh, the local press where we lived in the UK uh, about three or four years ago did a feature on us because we were doing raw food lunches um, for people coming to our home and we were serving up a raw food lunch. Um, and it was, it was given a double page spread in the local press. And, um, and it was a really nice feature, but um, you always get comments that people put underneath the feature, maybe online. And there was one saying, um, what was it? Uh, a couple of aging hippies, they ought to get a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who cares? Who cares if we are aging hippies? We, I don't think we, are we hippies? I don't know. Oh, I'm um, being a hippie, nothing yeah. wrong with that. We, we both look at it. <laughs> I come from a corporate background. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked in publishing for 25 years in international publishing. And I met with uh, a teacher for, what, 25 years? Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And we completely changed uh, what we did to, to, to do something that was more aligned with, 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 with us personally. Um, and, I mean, I used to be on a, a stupid salary, you know, uh, like a really high salary. And, and now it's kind of, it's almost like, you know, money money you need money to be able to continue what you do and to live but it's that those whole values around buying the most expensive cars and things like that it's just no longer important to us in fact we got rid of our car five years ago and we just walk everywhere and take the train instead so. i'm glad i'm not the only walker i go at least five kilometers a day like 10 kilometers at least twice a week just like yeah. i look in american terms i went from 240 pounds to 176 just by exercising, climbing mountains, walking, no gym, gained That's it back, brilliant. gained some of it back when I kind of fell off the bandwagon, but then I lost it again just by walking and eating vegan. So yeah. definitely, I'm guessing when the, the person made the comment on your story where about uh, the hippie thing, like, I guess having you together and like other people around you doesn't make it impact you as more. So it seems like, I know just other stories since we're kind of like going back and forth here about the community concept where I've been through a police academy in 2010, which is very challenging physically with all like the work we did. And I pledged yeah. a fraternity in college before that, which we went through a process which was challenging. Um, I won't go into details, but it's because we had each other in that small community, the other cadets and recruits and the other like pledges. Like if it wasn't for that, it's easy to give up. So um, when you're talking about the vegan business tribe and kind of like modeling what they do for just helping people eat healthier, et cetera, where I'm just picturing you on the other side of Zoom call hosting it and 20 or 12 different people. And just regardless of where they are in the world, they have a resource to go to. That's really how I see it from the outside. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for us, it was quite funny because uh, before we became part of the, or when we became part of the tribe, and uh, they, had, they, they contacted and say, would you like to be part of this networking session? I'm kind of, uh, a little bit more used to the networking in terms of where I was, you know, uh, working in terms of the corporate world. But uh, Annette was quite, you were quite nervous about it. I was it, quite averse to it. Um, I thought, oh, business and networking. That's not, <laughs> I, I don't, I've never belonged to that world. I'm not looking forward to this. And uh, I was totally wrong. I'm glad yeah. I didn't. No, she can't wait until yeah, the yeah, next one. To, um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's been great. We've made some It's so supportive. It really yeah. is a very, very supportive community. Yeah. 
uh, for your business and you and and of course your goal i mean that's that's obviously why they exist in the first place so yeah, yeah. Great. It, as, going back to what i was saying before <laughs> this thing about um people wanting to become plant-based or, or fully vegan um it, it is still against the societal norms uh, for a lot of people well it is against the societal norms it, there's no question about it um and there's a couple of things that that occurred to me when i was thinking about that um, one was for, for a few years prior to coming to Germany, I was working uh, part-time alongside our own, our own business. Um, I was working part-time in, a, in a, a health food and supplements chain in the UK. Um, and it was, it was a really good learning experience for me because I got to know what people were looking for. They stopped a lot of vegan products. And I, I got used to what people were looking for. I got used to the common problems uh, that people had particularly vegans who came in because they were feeling uh, unwell because they had no energy, they had uh, certain ailments. Um, and because I was trained to ask the questions and advise which supplements or which dietary uh, routes might work for them, um, I got to realize that actually um, vegans are not necessarily healthy because, of course, it doesn't mean to say you're, you're eating healthily. It just means that, you know, you may choose all of the all of the, 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 the processed refined foods full of sugar, fat, etc., in the same way you would with non-vegan foods. Uh, and therefore, um, uh, that reinforced my view that, look, it's really important you do this right. And I had really great conversations with these people, um, some of these people, and realized that they just weren't aware of the, um, uh, of the value of those whole foods full of nutrients, etc. And uh, of course, they wanted to come and just buy a supplement, you know, to get their iron in a supplement, their iodine in a supplement, their omega-3 in a supplement, uh, which is okay, but you can't really replace whole food nutrients um, in terms of how they're absorbed. So that was, uh, that was important for me to learn. Um, and the other thing was, um, when we came to Germany, um, I had to go to, to um, a pharmacy one day to, uh, to, buy, to buy something. Um, and the, the, the German pharmacist, which is, again, almost um, a caricature of what you would expect a German pharmacist to be, which is, uh, and uh, when I was talking to her, she said, oh, but you can't take that, you need to take this. Um, and I explained I was uh, plant-based, uh, uh, vegan, a vegan. I explained I was vegan. I said, if I was taking anything, it needed to be um, free of dairy, you know, because a lot of supplements and uh, drugs have um, lactose in them and um and she was looking through the directions and stuff trying to check whether it said and she said ah oh, she said these vegans you know and i thought actually i wish i'd responded at the time to say something like, what do you mean that's that's actually quite um discriminating but of course it was only once i got back home where i thought i wish i said that and i wish i said that because i didn't want to be confrontational yeah. but it's just that attitude that um that somehow you're almost a bit of a nuisance if you're vegan because it doesn't com conform to the normal standards. And, uh, and it's, again, it's, the, it's those kind of things that we want to make people feel, you, there's nothing wrong with you. There's, there's nothing that you need to be embarrassed about. It's actually, it's your, it's your birthright to be how you want to be and to eat how you want to be. Definitely. I think comes a place from like not understanding because you mentioned you two went to university, then you reconnected where in the same sense, but I had a few friends, one he was vegetarian, another one was vegan when I went to university many years ago. And back then I was kind of in that position where it's not like I made fun of them, but just kind of like like the pharmacist type example. And then after like kind of like the awakening, it's like, oh, now I get it. They were right all along. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we know that. <laughs> yeah. But I but yeah, think like, for us what... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I think for us, it was it was very important um, that we did take the uh, we, so we took an intensive uh, one year course with I think 200 hours of videos um, and um, weekly weekly call to discuss the content with with um, with Dr. Rick and Dr. Karen Dina. Um, and it really gave us the the, the underpinning of the knowledge um, that we could use to then be able to answer those questions and provide um uh help with anyone who had doubts about you know how they were going to go about doing it having a plant-based diet and i think until we did that i think we would always feel that we were just another couple of people who were doing this as a hobby um and just basing it on our personal experience but i think it's it was important for us to have some kind of background to as a, as a bed 
to, to do it on. And, and I think we've got to that point now where we feel we can have conversations with the plant-based health professionals and uh, we realize we have the knowledge to be part of that as well. Um, You're an amazing you know, resource, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We don't have the clinical experience or the clinical mm -hmm. knowledge, of course. Where we're going. Uh, but yeah, but that's not what we're looking for. It's more about it's about how the how how the nutrition um, is uh, obtained from a plant based diet and and what you need to look for because uh, there are there are things that you need to be aware of, of course. Definitely, and just kind of going more to my story, if I could elaborate yeah. a little bit. So, I pretty much it was. I was working for a vegan startup, and then I decided I kind of wanted to do my own thing, eventually transition into veganhealthpack.com, which I started, which my idea was a subscription box as all natural sources of B12, calcium, vitamin D, iron, zinc, omega-3 fat, fatty acids in natural form instead of pills. So like water lentil powder for B12, calcium, um, chia seeds, then a little case like mushroom jerky to just and kind of like get them interested in vitamin D type of thing where you can get the sun, but I don't have the nutritional background. So pretty much when I was interviewing people, some like dietitians, nutritionists, like they were the voice for me, but eventually down the road, I realized it was interesting, but there wasn't that much of a demand for it. So I had the idea of just try different things out. I posted in the Sydney, Australia Facebook group. Hey, I want to film a documentary called Creating a Vegan World. I draft up six or like eight posters in Photoshop. I was like, which one would be the coolest? And I, I won't say it went viral. It didn't get a million views, but like in that little community, it went viral. There's like a hundred people commenting. People are messaging me saying, I want to help. This and that took on a life of its own. So that's pretty much how this YouTube channel started. And like the whole documentary is really about like documenting behind the scenes of People see the world's going vegan, going plant-based, but I, if you look at the channel here, I read, interviewed a vegan lobbyist, Dr. Esselstyn, Lisa Simon, oh, yeah. yourself, all the people starting organizations that are like making the change. So in five years from now, they'll be like, wow, that's the reason why it's trending. So I'm like a blueprint for changing the world. But in the back of my mind, I still like, it's that health thing that I have the interest in, but I don't have the knowledge for. So parallel to this, I'm kind of building out, I'm reframing it, I mentioned for vegan versus plant-based, where I'm renaming it plant health pack, because I noticed a lot of people with like high cholesterol or gut health or brain health, it's, they go into it for health reasons. And the word vegan is somewhat of a trigger word. So I spoke with a, it's a lot of work behind the scenes. I, I'm speaking with the yeah. branding team. I'm calling up suppliers. I just had my friend do a lot of research for the top 10 foods for heart health, gut health, and brain health. So artichoke leaf extracts, clinically proven to lower cholesterol. I mentioned that, uh, I think he found like rosemary for brain health and like functioning, things like that. So eventually get like a medically prescribed type of feel where it comes in like a shelf stable box and get people interested in the food. But it's really me relying on the plant-based doctors and registered dietitians to be the voice of it for me. So I'm not sure I went into that rant. I always felt like talking on camera, and since we're recording, I might as well <laughs> include it here. Yeah, but. no, that's yeah, that's, that sounds really interesting as well. And and it's it's um some people like um uh, complete ready-made packs um depending on their lifestyles as well. Some people like to have the solution there for them. Um, other people like to do it in different ways. So I think there's a real space for that kind of approach and. Uh, uh, I really wish you luck with that. It yeah. sounds sounds really exciting. Yeah, like, we've had supplements in the past, yeah. haven't we? Oh, yeah. Especially in that transitional phase, really, you, you need you need a bit of help. And even if it's just uh, almost placebo, because it feels that you're doing the right thing, you need to help yourself to, to move on, I think. Yeah, it's also quite interesting that um, one of the things that um, often came up in conversation when we were being coached uh, by Dr. Rick and Dr. Karen um, was about having blood tests to check things like your your uh, omega-3 levels your triglyceride levels etc um, and it's not as easy in certainly in the uk just to go can can you test this please um to your doctor the doctors are too busy to do that so you'd have to actually pay privately to have those tests so we really go on by how we feel but of yeah. course we never really know how how are we converting omega to omega Sorry, how are we converting ALA into EPA and DHA? 
the omega-3 yeah. fats. We, we don't know. We kind of, I mean, we, we incorporate lots of, uh, we incorporate chia seeds, flax seed, uh, flax seed we eat walnuts, we eat hemp seed, um, and also we eat lots of leafy greens, which have a certain degree of omega-3 in them as well. Um, but we don't know how well we're converting that. We also keep our omega-6 levels low because we, otherwise they compete um, for the same enzymes. And therefore, if you're having a lot of omega-6, you'll know this probably anyway, if you have a lot of omega-6 in relation to omega-3, you're not then going to convert your omega-3 into the, into the right fats. Um, and again, we try and manage that. We think we're getting it right. We kind of know how to do it, but whether our bodies are actually responding, we don't. We don't know. So just as a safety measure, we also take a supplement uh, of omega-3 algae-based, um, algae-based, algae-based, however you pronounce it. Um, we've all got different pronunciations. Uh, and it, it's just really as a as a kind of... Um, it's a backup, really, a backup, in case just we're not... In case we're not a precaution, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So things like that. I mean, supplements are in, are well, important. Yeah, and there's a B12, obviously. Yeah, and B12, of course, which we have to. Uh, I was really yeah. fatigued for a while, and I didn't know why. When I went to the doctor, it was for something unrelated, just like my face was feeling a little bit numb on the side, probably, I don't know, maybe like an infection or something. But then when I got my test, my B12 were dangerously low. So once I started right. taking the supplement, I realized, well, while you were speaking, I just realized, for the months before that, I was like tired all day, like naps in the middle of the day. But like now since taking the supplement, it's like I feel lifted up more. And yeah. maybe yeah. your body tells you that, but you don't actually get it until you actually get the blood work. So no, exactly. And I mean anyone who is plant-based or vegan, um who is completely 100 percent plant-based or, or, or vegan, um I'm still saying all. Oh. I mean it's the same thing, but <laughs> we tend to use we food tend to use the term it's... vegan as, as like the, the whole uh, yeah. philosophy the rather, than the, rather than the, the, mm -hmm. the eating um so if you don't take b12 uh, as a supplement then you're, you're potentially going to run into problems there's there's no kind of you know you can't survive long term without taking it so yeah it's it's essential really for everyone and you can't do that thing that you've just mentioned of uh, how how do i feel i feel great everything must be fine because you might feel great for it a couple of years even but you'd be if you're not having b12 it will hit you at some point and that's that's yeah you've already alluded to it it mm -hmm. be dangerous so it's, it's quite funny uh, we were saying as well that i don't know whether we're normal or not. <laughs> i think there's one of the dangers that you can you can become too obsessive um with um with with diets and and, and we we recognize that in, in others that you know oh i can't have that because um and for us, you know, we're very careful in what we eat, but we also, we don't want to be too dogmatic, but there are certain things you've got to be dogmatic about, and that is B12. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> it might amuse some of the listeners if uh, if you're posting this interview more widely, um, to know that um, for literally one year, uh, in the whole time we were doing our intensive course, we tracked every single thing we were eating, uh, the grams, we weighed everything. I mean, I thought I would never do this because you know, I'm not into kind of that level of detail, but we did it because we wanted to see exactly what nutrition we were getting. And we we put it into an app, which you may be familiar with, Chronometer. Chronometer, yes. I knew it right so, before you said it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's fantastic in terms of, and it's pretty reliable, I think, because the sources are all taken from the five best databases, world food databases, like, um, the USDA, um, etc. Um, and it was amazing that we were seeing what our, um, our B vitamin levels were, well, not levels, because you never know, because it's based on what you absorb, yeah, of course. It's so it's based on your intake rather than what you're absorbing. Um, but, you know, we were knowing, we knew which, where the problems were um, for us in terms of where we really had to think about varying our diet. And I mean, it clearly, Things like vitamin B3, uh, we learned that you've got to eat lots of things like um, beans, legumes. Nectarines. Uh, nectarines. <laughs> uh, but B3 can be, you know, can be, you've got to watch, watch that. Um, but also, um, I mean, we always eat a Brazil nut every day to get our selenium <laughs> or every other day. Um, and the other one, which we realized is zinc. 
which um, is, is quite difficult to cover your zinc levels unless you're really thinking about it. So we we regularly eat things like wild rice, which is a really good um, source of zinc. Of course, there's things like pumpkin seeds, and we, we all know about that. Various beans. Uh, various beans. But again, you've got to then think, okay, how much of that, pump, things like pumpkin seeds, should I eat because I don't want to have too much omega-6, because omega-6 pumpkin seeds You're going to put high. people off with this. So, <laughs> But it, it's things like that. It's just about being aware of it. it but yeah, I mean, and it get it gets much much easier. It just it's just when you're in the early stages trying to figure it out. Yeah. It, it's helpful if somebody can point these things out to you rather than you thinking, how am I going to do this? Definitely. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the yeah, I feel like I'm in the early mid stages when you're talking about the omega the three versus omega six or the Brazil nuts for ceiling. It's like I know enough where things are coming together. When I lived in the Wisdom House, we had three Brazil nuts next to the breakfast every morning. And they're like, oh, it's good for you. I don't know why. Just eating that because of the host said so and it tasted good. But now, like, that's tying them together. And so, yeah, don't have to get overwhelmed for people listening to this. Like, you're you're kind of looting where it's not overwhelming and just take it one step at a time and just follow the right advice. And if something Absolutely. happens it early yeah. by getting blood tests. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's kind of like feeling your way and feel, doing what what is right, but having the right knowledge to be able to, to do it as well. And that's why we always say to people, whenever we're saying about a plant-based diet is effective at this or can be effective for this, we always we often say a well-planned um, because it does need to be planned in terms of you need to know how to do it. But um, it's, you know, it's already a great start if you're incorporating more and more plant-based foods in your diet. Um, and we want people to be able to thrive on it and, you know, make it sustainable for life and that's that's why we want to be you know that that is the conversation about you know come here and and get support motivation inspiration let us know your experiences as well because it's great people like to hear stories from others we want to hear oh, people's yeah. stories so one of the that's things the conversation yeah. yeah that is the conversation so one of the things we're doing is we're we're interviewing people um on on zoom from time to time um and and putting that on a, a youtube channel or embedding that in our we want to embed that in our on our website ultimately um so that people can learn from others but also one of the things that we want to do is create what we're calling our um, inspiration space where we have a particular theme uh so for example um people who have vegan children um and want to get them more um recognized as being vegan at school um you know the inclusivity issue um, because there are still a lot of issues there in the UK and, and other countries where children are, who, are, who are vegan maybe feel that they're being sidelined um, or excluded from being able to eat what they want to eat. So if we can create a space where maybe three or four people can come together on a, a Zoom call and actually say what their experiences are and help other people who are having difficulties there. So we want to provide a place where people can go away think that's really good and really learn there. Or it's, that's going to be really useful. I can actually... I can actually go out there now and, and know what I have to do. And be more confident about talking to other people as well. Because again, when you feel that you're the only person, it, you, there's a tendency to shrink back a bit. But if you know that other people are having these conversations that might be a bit difficult, a bit challenging, you feel a bit more confident to, to do it yourself, to at least give it a try. And that's really important. Absolutely. I wrote in the chat before we started the calls, like talk about the word conversation, but I get it now without even having to ask it. Love yeah, it. that's good. Cool. I don't, I don't want this to run too far. I could talk to you two forever. Like this could be like a ten-hour interview, but I just want to make sure that I could download the recording before my Wi-Fi gets out. So, do you want to leave any parting words, whether it's your website, your YouTube channel, or any final words for people listening to this? I think it'll be the website at the, at the moment, and um, it, it is still new. We do have a YouTube channel. Everything's accessible from the website. And I, I think that would be the ideal place to, to start up all our social social media is, is there as well to, to access. We do use Facebook quite a lot. Um, LinkedIn, we use a lot. And the web address is www.henryandhenryeu.com. Hey, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this interview. I learned a lot from them. And it's really this aspect of community, no matter where you are in the world, where, as I said during the interview, I lived in the vegan community house. I've been part of vegan potlucks. And that's the real reason that brought me into the vegan movement and kept me here. So what they're doing, they're doing it online where regardless of where you are in the world, whether you're the, whether you're the only vegan in the small town that you live in or in a bigger city, 
this allows you to connect with other vegans. And I really think this is a very important aspect of creating a vegan world. So if you're new to this channel, I am filming Creating a Vegan World documentary. I'm posting a lot of the interviews on this channel leading up to it. If you know somebody who's interested in being interviewed on this channel, visit veganworldfilm.com or comment in the comment sections below, tag someone that might be interested and subscribe to this channel. Check the links in the description for their links as well if you wanna to subscribe to our newsletter. So really hope you enjoyed the interview and I'll see you on the next one.